Hello everybody, this is Dan from Hard Design Solutions. This is going to be video one of a multi-part video uh, going over Tournament Manager. So this first video is going to be um, the basics of Tournament Manager and mostly focusing on going over the Tournament Manager wizard and creating your first tournament. So creating your first tournament could be for very useful for planning an event all the way to running an event so in this case we're going to create our first tournament and what it's going to ask us to do is name the tournament so in this case it's going to save to my desktop and that's going to be the 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 name of the event so right now it's compiling, it's creating the file, and the next screen you're going to see is going to be the screen for the beginning of the wizard. So this is going to be the first screen you see, it's going to walk through each individual step, and let's walk through it together. So when you click next, so if this is a event that is on robot events, on your robot events page uh, you will be given two different codes under the administration side of the event so if it is listed on robot events you can simply click uh, this checkbox here and then it will allow you to copy and paste the codes in um, for this case we're not going to be pulling the information from robot events because what this does is this will download all of the information from robot events how many teams what teams uh, the awards that you're giving so in this case we're gonna create it as we go so we're gonna click next the next thing it's going to ask you is what platform are you competing in vex IQ vex EDR or vex U. so for today's video we'll be doing a vex IQ event so when we click next it's going to ask you how big your event is so depending on how big your event or how many fields you're, be, you're going to be running is going to determine how many uh, it's going to determine what selection you choose um, so in this case I'm going to do a medium tournament because what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a tournament with two or more fields so when I go to click next um, this is where you would name your uh, event, so you should name it what, whatever you named it on robot events, or um, if it is uploaded to robot events. Um, in this case, since I don't have anything um, on robot events, I'm just going to name it something test. Um, and then we are going to create a password. So this password is going to be used whenever you try and connect uh, any other computer, any um, or uh, anything to the main server. So the main server is the computer that's being uh, used to create the tournament. So in this case, I'm just going to call it Power with a capital P, one, two, three. Um, this next screen is for league play. Um, so if you are participating in a league, you're just going to click this box and you're going to go through um, the, a series of questions. Um, most events are not league, um, so if someone would like, I can cover it. Just go ahead and write it down in the comments, and we can make a video about how to set up a league properly. Um, so the next thing it's going to ask you is what competition are you going to be running? So it will always automatically select the newest competition, but if you're just hosting a scrimmage or something and want to run one of the old games, especially in the classrooms, uh, you can always go back and run the scoring system for the old games. Um, so we're going to use next level because that's what's being um, competed with right now. So in this case, if you selected the robot events checkbox and you put in your event code and your tournament manager code, this will already be filled with the number of teams. Uh, what age group they're in, so middle, uh, so elementary school, middle school, since this is IQ, the team name, and the organization. 
So in this case, since we're creating our own tournament, we're going to click generate teams and a little pop-up window is going to show up and it's going to ask you how many teams are competing. So this is where you can really um, get a lot of good numbers for how many hours you should allocate for running a tournament or how many teams, depending on how many teams will be depending on how many matches you play. So in this case, we're going to say that we're going to run an event with 32 teams. So when you click OK, in this case, it just generated me 32 teams. So when you click Next, it's going to ask you how many alliances um, are there. And as EP, you get to select this. So in this case, um, I'm going to say that there are six alliances that are going to go to play in the finals matches. That means for VexIQ, the top 12 teams will compete. So, uh, and for Vex IQ, it's automatically assigned. So one will get paid with two, three with four, five with six, all the way down to 11 with 12. So when we, when we click next, so field sets is the number of fields that is gonna be running at the same time. So if you're going to be running two fields and you want it to be going back and forth then you're going to have one field set because only one field is playing at a particular time but for example if you have like four fields and you want two to be running at the same time you could set this to two and you can select up to eight but this is going to be the, the number of fields that are running at any one time so what that means is if we select two fields here or two field sets here, then matches one and two will start at the same time. Matches three and four will start at the same time. So you, this is not how many fields you are running, this is how many fields you want running at the same time. So in this case, we are going to do uh, two field sets because um, uh, just, just, just to show. So when we click next, the first thing it's going to ask you is what are you going to call field set one? So we'll call it odd fields and we'll call it field one and we'll remove this field and we'll call it field three. Click add. So now when we click next, this will be for even fields and Field two, yes, and field four. So that means fields one and two will be running at the same time, and fields three and four should be running at the same time. So now when we click next, uh, the next thing it's going to ask you is, um, are you going to have any skills fields that are going to be running? So if you have any skills fields that are going to be running, you would just simply tell it how many fields, um, how many skills fields are dedicated to skills. Um, so in this case, I'm going to set it to zero because for just, I, actually I'm going to set it to one for the example. And then the number of attempts. So if you leave it at zero, that means turn manager will not um, lock them out if they go over a certain amount. So we're going to go with three because that's the number that REC has set for the rules. So that means they get three driver's skills and they also get three programming skills. Um, and that's what's going to be combined in order to get the robot skills. So as soon as they attempt more than three driver skills, it will, it will let the operator skills know that they exceeded their number of attempts and will not allow any more scores to be saved. Um, this is very important. Again, it's three driver skills and three programming skills, scores, and that's what gets uploaded. The next um, menu is going to be for pit displays. So pit displays uh, typically are away from the fields, uh, typically around the pit area, and you'll see anywhere from one to two screens that have um, either the schedule or the rankings running at any given time. So uh, in this case, we will 
create two uh, screens. Um, and you'll notice that when I click the, the down arrow, I can go down here and also change what it, it will default to when, when those screens are first turned on. Uh, these can be changed later um, in tournament managers themselves, but for right now, um, we have it set up so that the rankings and the schedules will always be showing on, you know, people typically use like a projector or a big, t uh, a big TV screen. And again, these are typically away from the fields themselves and typically towards a pit area. So this is one of the most important steps in the wizard. And this is something that I think a lot of EPs uh, should do before the event starts um, so that they can plan out the day and how many matches and uh, per robot a team is going to have. Um, so what you would do here is you would enter the time um, that you would first see for matches. So in this case, we have uh, 32 teams um, for IQ. We're going to say that these are qualification matches and they're on six minute match cycles. Uh, it will also not let you um, create a match, uh, a, a, a schedule if the times are wrong. So in this case, it says that we're going backwards in time. So if I switch to the PM, so I will have a block of matches that will run from two hours from 10 a.m. to 12. So what you'll see here is the qualification type. So in this case, the qualification matches that will be happening between 12, uh, between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m running on six minute match cycles means we will get 40 matches in and each team will play um, two matches. Some teams will play three matches. So um, down here, it uh, also keeps track of how many qualification matches are going to count towards the rankings. Um, so the cycle time is the time it takes between matches. So from the start of the match to the start of the next match is your cycle time. So in this case, we have six minutes between, uh, uh, five minutes between matches because the matches are one minute long. So if we wanted to try and get more matches in, what we could do is if we double click on this, we will be able to edit it, or if we cancel it, or if we, yeah, we we'd want we'd want to double click it, um, and you can change the match cycle time. And what you'll see is as we update it, you'll see now that we have we have four minute match cycles, which means we'll get 60 matches in before lunch, and every team will play three matches, and a good in this case a good chunk of teams will also play four matches. So now what we want to do is we want to create those matches after lunch. So for example, let's just say we're running until 2.30. We're going to select qualification matches again, same match cycle times. And what you'll see is now we're running 4.69 matches per team. Uh, so typically what you're trying to do is you're trying to find a happy medium in which um, these two numbers equal to a whole number if you can. So I'm going to double click this so I can start editing it again and change this up until now at this point every team will play eight matches. Um, so now if we click next. This is where we're actually going to create the qualification matches. Now, you're you're probably going to run this uh, recreate your qualification match schedule more than once. So if it's before the event, um, you don't you shouldn't print your match uh, your qualification matches just in case teams don't show up um, for whatever reason. So in this case, we're going to click create qualification matches, and what we see here is there's going to be 128 matches total and uh, which is going to equal out to eight per team. 
There's also this cool uh, menu for schedule statistics, which will show you how many matches each team's are getting. So in this case, we have it worked out that every team is going to play eight matches. Um, this is going to tell you, and the next most important one is this one, which is going to tell you um, uh, how many matches there are uh, between uh, two, uh, one team competing. So on average, teams will have 16 matches um, to get their stuff together uh, to get out to the fields. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to click next. This next menu, again, will have already been filled out if you are um, uploading your or downloading your information from robot events. Um, you can also go through and also just click and add whatever uh, awards you are giving. If we click next. Uh, web publishing is uh, mostly for the VexVIA app. So any teams that are using VexVIA, um, they can get their matches or their rankings um, uh, displayed to their phone. Um, one thing to keep in mind is this will publish almost immediately. So as soon as you save match scores on Tournament Manager, it will show on the VexVIA app. So whatever you have selected here will display almost immediately and live as you uh, click save. So we're going to just click next one more time and we're done. So once we click finish, it's going to generate the tournament itself. Um, so right now it is generating for me. And as soon as it is done, I will slide it over. So this is what Tournament Manager is going to look like. I'm just going to maximize it. If we click this down arrow, you will see all 128 matches. Um, it's a, a lot of matches. It will also display what time the matches should be going on. So in this case, you'll see that qualification match one and qualification match two are running at the same time. And then you'll see qualification match three and qualification match four are running at the same time. Um, so matches one and two are supposed to start at 10 o'clock with the next matches going off at 10.04. Um, that will wrap it up for this video. Uh, we will be having uh, more videos about how to use um, the different features inside of robot events and whatnot. Please leave your comments and let us know if you have any questions. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, thank you for your time and uh, look at the next video for any other updates.